What's up people? Today I would like to go over the steps of building wealth and mostly the why, the what, and the how. And uh, then I'm gonna tell you in the middle of that why I don't follow most of them. So all of this is basically accepted wisdom among the investment advisors and people who advise people on how to get out of debt and actually stop living paycheck to paycheck. And so the, the main points are you need to have an emergency account and you need to pay off your debt. Beyond that, everything is gravy pretty much. But if you, if you want to actually build wealth and uh, have a higher net worth at some point, you're going to have to start investing. And uh, it doesn't matter what you invest in, really, as long as you're smart about it and know what you're doing. But you need to start investing in something because even, even making $100,000 a year, you're never going to be in a position where you can just comfortably retire without ever investing anything. So with that said, the first step is control your spending. And uh, everyone uses Mint to basically keep track of literally everything that gets paid. And Mint, if you want to look it up, is amazing for tracking literally all of your accounts and what exactly gets paid every month, what you spend your money on. You can add budgets, you can look back on previous months and which budget or which category you spent how much money on and all that. And uh, if you haven't kept track of your spending, things kind of just tend to get out of control unless you're very set in your ways. Like, obviously, if you go to work, then spend exactly $5 on a foot-long Subway sandwich at lunch, and then you come home, and on the way home, you get a meal at McDonald's, and it's the same thing every single day, then clearly it doesn't get out of control. But for most people, it doesn't really work that way. So. You need to keep track of exactly how much you're spending, what you're spending the money on, and especially keep track of all the fees and uh, all the bills you have. Anytime you miss a bill, especially a credit card bill, you get charged like, I've seen up to $37 just for a late payment on a credit card bill. If you use Mint, you have it right there on the first screen what your next few bills are, how much they are, when they're due, and uh, don't ever pay a bill late. Um, your goal should be to pay off all your credit cards every month completely, but even if you can't do that, make the minimum payment. Um, if you can, make the minimum payment automatically so that you are never in a position where it's late. So from there, you need to improve your income, probably, if possible. Now, uh, it's not possible for everyone, or rather, it's not easy for everyone. It's possible for everyone. And um, if you have a minimum wage job somewhere, try to get to Walmart. Um, Walmart starts people at $10 an hour these days, and there is room to move up. And uh, there's many other companies out there as well, like um, Amazon starts uh, warehouse workers at 12.50, I think. Um, Aldi starts at like $13 an hour. Um, there's many companies out there that pay above minimum wage. You should pretty much always be looking for a job if you intend to be working. 
So unless you're retiring, um, you should be looking for a job pretty much continuously, regardless of whether or not you have a job. There's always room to move up, and uh, you can... If you look for a job while having a job, you're in a much more comfortable position. Um, you have much less pressure in interviews. There's just it's just so much better to be looking for a job while you actually have a job and you don't have like a deadline of I cannot pay rent literally in three days. So um, that's the the two main things, and um, obviously from there. If you're spending less than you're making, you're on a good path. And if you just continue that, you're going to eventually get out of debt, start building something. So from there, build an emergency fund. Um, as with the previous thing, if you lose your job and you're going to have a problem paying rent, you were in big trouble. And um, over half the people in the U.S. right now cannot pay a $1,000 emergency expense without going into debt. So you need to eventually be in a position where if your car breaks down and needs to be repaired, otherwise you can't get to work, you can take care of it. And uh, that's what the emergency fund is for. <clears throat> if you're familiar with payday loans, the emergency fund would be emergencies that would have previously made you get a payday loan. Otherwise, if there's any chance at all that you can handle it in any other way, don't touch the emergency fund. It it's supposed to just be there for emergencies. And um, there's, there's actually two steps to that that you should have. One is to have a whole month of living expenses, including rent, car payment, insurance, everything, in your checking account. And you should have an emergency fund of three to six months of expenses in a savings account somewhere. So for day-to-day -day things and even emergencies like your car breaks down or your, your fridge breaks and you need to replace it quickly or things like that, you shouldn't have to dip into your emergency fund. But say you have to get your car repaired and there's no way you make your payments, your rent, your ed anything, dip into the emergency account and uh, make sure you get it all paid off. Now, this step is the first step that I haven't done as much as I should have. I kind of pulled a lot of other things forward. So, um, the advisors and financial experts all tell you to start building an emergency account before you pay off your debt. And if you have a good, safe, salaried position, you know the, the money is coming in and you should probably pay off high interest debt and it will save you money. However, the emergency fund really should take precedence. You should be building that before you even touch your credit card debt. Um, it's different for payday loans because the interest rate is just insane. Um, I've paid over 500%, I think, if it were com compounded. So um, if it's payday loans or things like that, um, anything above the standard credit card range in interest paid off before building the emergency fund but after that, um, I would go for a kind of a staggered approach, like have one month of, uh, of living expenses in an account, then pay off most of the debt or most of the high interest debt, then build, a, build the emergency fund up a little more, 
pay off more debt and obviously that's where the next step is um, you need to pay off anything that's over five-ish percent interest you shouldn't work on paying off a mortgage early um, you should probably never work on paying a mortgage early if it's a reasonable rate um, anything under five percent just keep paying it um, your investments should be a higher um, yield than the interest rate on a mortgage so the stock market historically has returned about eight percent so I wouldn't cut it that close obviously if you're if the debt you're considering paying off is seven percent even six percent I, I would probably even go towards five percent I would tend to pay it off anything below that though is just not worth it you can invest the same money into the stock market get better returns and then um, pay off the loan at a later date with inflation adjusted money which saves you more and then retirement accounts so there's another caveat to that um, you should have probably worked on that somewhere between steps three and four if there's a company match to the 401k you after if if your cash flow is at all positive after step two and there's a company match you should probably go for that um, it's literally free money and um, most company match is less than 10 percent of your income so if you cut back on spending a little more you should probably be able to handle that um, I would need an extremely good reason to pass up free money so if there's a company match in a 401k almost always take it the number of times where you shouldn't take it is so small that I, I don't think I would ever advise anyone not to take the free money um, beyond that um, if you're eligible go for a Roth IRA because when you finally do retire it's free money you fund a Roth IRA with post-tax money so money that you have already paid income tax on but all the gains all the money in the account after you retire is tax-free so you should be building that you should be building a 401k but beyond the employer match on the 401k and the Roth IRA um, there's a, there's many options you can go um, some people tell you to max out the 401k to the whole nineteen thousand dollars a year um, but that largely depends on your goals any money in a 401k cannot be touched until you're 59 and a half without massive tax um, like fines or fees or whatever you want to call it so before you're 59 and a half any money in a 401k that you want to pull out uh, cost you 10 percent fee and your normal income tax rate so usually you're probably paying about 30 percent so depending on what your goals are and when you plan on retiring um, you might not want to do that but chances are it's the better way to do it anyway so if you don't have a clear path to retirement before you're 59 and a half um, probably the 401k is the best way to invest money at that point point. and after you finally done all that you can finally start investing in something that's not a retirement account be it uh, real estate investing, stock market investing, um, there's a few other things. Um, people throw cryptos out. I wouldn't advocate for cryptos. I would not get into that. But 
And there's many ways to start investing and now that you've finally gotten to the step where you could, you should probably do something. Um, even if you just throw it into um, a, a normal index fund that tracks the Dow Jones or the S&P 500, I would personally not stay away from the Dow Jones, but S&P 500, the NASDAQ, um, anything that tracks an index, a reasonable index, is probably a good choice. So unless you know better, just throw it into the S&P 500 index fund and uh, enjoy like 8% gains every year.